Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I proceed, uh, allow me to make a slight correction in the video that the self-immolation incident happened in this year, 2012, is not four, it's one four. Sorry for the <laughs> mistake. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and the organizer, uh, Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy uh, for the floor. And I'm not a former political prisoner uh, or uh, an inspiring uh, human rights activist who has an extensive personal account to share with you all. I'm Tibetan. I work for human rights in Tibet. My day starts uh, by meeting uh, Tibetan former political prisoners, monks, nuns, and Tibetan at all age group who have been able to escape to India and interviewing them, meeting them, and closely following the deteriorating human rights situation in Tibet through various sources. So it is my great honor to represent the voice of voiceless Tibetan in Tibet. Uh, most of you would be knowing that would be knowing the situation in Tibet. Tibetans have suffered and continue to suffer repression and discrimination in Tibet. The video we have just seen is a video and photos sent by various persons from Tibet, and obviously at very great risks. And there's no doubt to say that it shows what is happening inside Tibet. Tibetans' right of or Tibetan freedom of association, speech, assembly have been systematically violated. Tibetans are undergoing untold suffering. Tibetan activists or Tibetan intellectuals, writers, singers, and environmentalists who exercise their freedom of expression and opinion. Thank you. Who exercise their freedom of opinion and uh, their views are arbitrarily, arbitrarily arrested, tortured, and they are unjustly sentenced to an imprisonment under the church, I quote, threatening state security and disturbing the state stability. And Tibetan nomads, they are forced to resettle, and they are forcefully removed from their ancestral land, and they are forced to reduce and sell their herds. And if we see the schools in the Tibet, there's no room for Tibetan stu student to study Tibet Tibetan language. Tibetan language is either dropped completely or retained only as a retained only as a language subject. So now the situation in Tibet has become so tense and worrisome that people are setting themselves on fire. They're calling international intervention now. Sadly, 27 Tibetans. They have set themselves on fire. And out of which, so they call for the freedom and the return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet. And sadly, rather than responding to the underlying grievances of Tibetans, Chinese authorities responded each immolation incident more violently by imposing heavy military measures like police states in the monasteries and in the home, roadblocks, and they intensify patriotic re-education classes or session in the monasteries and nunneries. So during this session, monks and nuns, they are forced to denounce their beloved His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and they are forced to express their loyalty or express their allegiance towards the state and the communist leader. So acts of religious devotion are seen suspiciously as an expression of political separatism, or those who speak Tibetan language are become an object of suspicion. And monastery, which used to be an auspicious place to pray, these have become a military camps now. In all the monasteries, there is a committee called Democratic Management Committee created and established by the Chinese authorities who is responsible to carry the patriotic re-education session in the monasteries, and they regularly intervene or interfere the daily practices of monks and nuns. So out of 27 Tibetans uh, who have set themselves on fire, 21 were monks, nuns, and former monks. So if the Chinese government claim of 
Tibetans enjoying their rights under PRC, enjoying the economic development is true. I'm wondering why they, Tibet is close now to the independent observer. They should allow, Chinese authorities should allow the independent observers and foreign media to assess, to see the situation if the, their claim is correct, if their claim is right. And we do not want to see people dying on fire and at the same time, those who have set themselves on fire do not want to end their life in pain. Unfortunately, due to grim human rights situation and political repression and cultural assimilation, for the past 60 years, now Tibetans, they have no room to express, no room to express and to demonstrate freely. They are setting themselves on fire. So the Tibetans have reached to a stage to take this tragic and to take this desperate situation, to take this desperate act to call a global intervention to save Tibetan rights and Tibetan lives who have been following nonviolence so far. So taking this opportunity, I would like to urge international communities to intervene, or to contribute their own way to elevate the dismal human rights situation in Tibet. And I thank you once again.